We're going to look at a simple heating system and this has just contacts and coils to make a simple solution. We're going to build something like this process control loop where we have a set point, a controller that turns on a heating process, it reads the temperature and goes back and checks against that or compares with the set point. Let's look at our first example. We've got a start and a stop so that we can control the system. We also have a, a system variable to turn on that whole entire system, that coil. That helps build our start stop uh, run. We have a low range of temperatures, a mid range of temperatures, and then our high range, our hot. And then we're also gonna add two variables to increase those ranges to go from low to mid and mid to hot. And then we have our output, which is going to be the heater. So let's look at our ladder logic. We have a start, so when the start button is energized and the stop button is de-energized or negated, it should turn on the system. Once that system is on, we'll bypass the start and it should stay on. Now here our next set is the system, so once that's on, we're looking for this temperature hot, so it's system on and the temperature hot, then let's turn on the heater. So that's our output coil. If the system is on, we're also gonna turn on the low temperature, so it's at the lowest range automatically. It's always gonna be low. If the increase value is on, so once we've gone to the next range, we'll input that, then our temperature low is also on, then our temperature mid is gonna be selected. If our second range is increased and our temperature mid is activated, then our temperature hot will be energized. Once our temperature hot is energized here, then our heater should be turned on. That should complete our loop. Let's test this. So we're gonna to go to online simulation select login yes and I'm going to start the PLC simulation and I'm just gonna start with a true value when I turn this on so I'm gonna write the values that should turn on my system and my system that also turn on my temperature low the lowest range and we can see that's on here as well the rest is off so let's turn on our increase. Let's write that value. Once our increase is true and our temperature low is true from the start, our temperature mid is on. Now we can see that that's activated as well. And then again, let's increase the temperature one more time. Once I write that value, our temperature hot is activated. And once our temperature hot and our system is still on, our heater should turn on. And that should complete our heater loop. This could be done a little bit simpler with a few less variables. So again, I have my start and my stop and my system. So that's the same as before. We have our start stop uh, rung here. We're also gonna have some sort of uh, temperature control, a set point and an, an input temperature, as well as that heater coil being turned on. Notice that our set point and temperature are integers so those are values so now we can actually enter what our values are going to be the other thing to notice here is when our system is on and our temp control is on our heater is on this is similar to our temperature hot being turned on and then our heater being turned on here what's different is this rung here we've replaced those three rungs of ranges of temperatures with a less than or equal to sign so when our system is turned on, it'll enable this block. We've got a temperature integer and a set point. So if the temperature is less than the set point or equal to it, then we'll turn this temperature control coil on or we'll energize it. Once that temperature control and the system is on, our heater will go on. If the temperature goes above the set point, then this temperature control should be de-energized. Let's test that out. And my prepared value is going to be true to start my system. I also want a set point to start with. 
So I'm going to set my set point to 65. So anytime it's below 65, it should heat up. And let's set our current temperature to 72 just to be safe. I'm going to write these values and we can see that the system has started. I can even prepare that value and my system is still running once I depress my start. But my temp control is not going. Let's change our temperature. So now our current temperature, let's set that to let's say 60 degrees and let's write these values. Once I do that, the temperature is now below the set point. My temperature control turns on. Once the two of these are on, our heater is energized. A much simpler way to solve a more complicated problem. Those are two examples of creating your process control loops. Hopefully that helped you use some simple operators, comparisons, and math operations.